this product is still something I'm gonna tell you I love. At first I hated it, then I fell in love with it, I raved about it last summer, and I'm going to just tell you again, this is your summer PSA, that if you're wanting that clean girl glowy summer vibe for this year, but something that I really don't like, and I did not get the warning. Some of you guys tried to just warn me like because I'm assessing what's going on right now, what's happening, and he was like, okay, but he goes, you trying the new foundation? And I said, yes. And he said, it looks cakey. And I was like, whoa, savage. But thank you. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to an end of month faves and fails where I have a lot of products I wanna go through with you guys. I usually do in these videos. I have a lot of makeup in front of me that I have been purchasing. We've got a ton of drugstore makeup. We also have some high end items. We also have some high end skincare things that broke me out and I'm still like my skin is in a recovery from and it was like an $80 retail value that we got in a BoxyCharm. So I'm super bummed about that. Also some items that have been going viral on social media lately that I didn't even realize when I was like, I need to try this product. So I have so much to go through with you today. Grab your tea, grab your snack, grab your water, get comfy, and let's do a chatty end of month video together. Cheers. How is it already June, friends? Like, it is already like that summer season and I am so excited. The way though I really tend to lean when it gets to be warmer out is to do a little less on the skin in the day to day. Obviously, there are gonna be moments where I'm gonna wanna do a full beat like today, but there are other times where I'm wanting to take care of my skin more so I can wear less makeup. And something that I have been loving is a reusable under eye patches for my morning routine. And I have been doing this for a while. I did not know that these were going viral. I really didn't. I didn't know this was such a sensation when I found these. I actually heard about them from Tati. And since Tati tends to be like a little ahead of the curve sometimes, I have been trying this for a while. These are the reusable Pacifica under eye patches. What you do with these is you use your own favorite skincare, clean these daily, pop them on, and you essentially have your very own customized eye patches that work best for you, and these are reusable. And I have washed them and used them over and over again, you guys, and they work great. Now they do have these reusable masks for each section of your face, the forehead, the crow's feet, the under eyes, all the things. And I thought about getting all of them, but then I saw how much they cost, and I thought, well, let me start with one piece and kind of move on because it's not a ton of money, but it's enough that made me go, well, I don't know if I want to buy three different pieces for $15 a piece because that would be like $45 and I wasn't sure how well these were going to work. Were they going to really be reusable? So I started with the piece that I actually use every morning, which is the eye masks. And you guys know I have been loving my eye bright now, the Better Skin Co. under eye serum in the morning. So I will just pop a little bit of this on, put these on top, and then I just kind of sit, do my morning routine with some coffee, and then I remove these, wash them, and then kind of just go on to the next steps. So, so far I'm finding these do work pretty well. I haven't used them with anything else other than this like oily serum though. So I'm curious how they will do when maybe I'm trying a different piece of skincare, but I like these so far. The next thing that I have been trying is something that I got from one of my BoxyCharm slash Ipsy's. This is the Halo Beauty That Blockbuster Moisturizer Cream. It's a hydrating cream. This is $58. So I was like with the branding being JLo, the cost, I really hoped this would work for me. And so far I'm finding if I just use a little bit of this pretty thick product and kind of put it in targeted places, it does pretty well. I noticed it says that Blockbuster and it's trademarked and I kind of found that to be amusing. I was like, she's not trying to trademark Blockbuster. So she had to add in that Blockbuster. I was like, interesting. That's an interesting choice for naming, but that's just a branding notice I had. It says this hyaluronic acid fueled formula packs continuous hydration, brightens, soothes, and plumps your skin for a superstar glow. So obviously this is something that you need to give more time to, but what I wanted to say about this as I'm trying it is that it did not break me out. And I'm a very sensitive skin girl. So if sometimes I know you guys are like, tell me if it breaks you out or tell me how you do with it and then I'll try it. I wanted you to know, maybe it's not a fave just yet, but I am noticing it's not breaking me out and it's doing good things for me and I can put on makeup over the top of it. So that's the most I can tell you at the moment and I wanted to add this in because it is something I'm currently trying and I know a lot of you guys like to know that when we maybe all get it at the same time from a BoxyCharm. 
but something that I really don't like and I did not get the warning. Some of you guys tried to warn me because you tried to use it right away when you got it from BoxyCharm. I was trying other stuff, hadn't gotten to try it yet, and I wish I had been able to check my DMs in time because I moved on to trying the Beauty Stat Universal C Serum and girl, it did me dirty. This product has an $85 value. That is so high that, you know, you really want something like that to work because what is it about that price tag that makes you think this could be amazing? This could be genius for me. I'm so lucky and so excited I get to try this. And darn it to heck, it broke me out in several places on my face. I was so bummed. And I really appreciate, because some of you that are, have similar skin to me, tried it as well and you tried to warn me. You tried, it, it was just a busy time and I was late getting to my DMs. So when I saw that, I was like, okay, then this is the culprit. Because as you guys know, I need to try a lot of makeup throughout the month. I do try a lot of skincare. Sometimes it's harder for me to pinpoint, but it was the same time I was introducing this to my, my face and you guys had told me it did the same for you. So it's such a darn bummer. Vitamin C, I have found over the past few years, really can kick off some breakouts for me if I'm not careful or don't use it super sparingly. I feel like I didn't even use a lot with this though, and I had multiple breakouts from it. So unfortunately, that is a fail for me. Something that I love pulling out about this time of year, that going into June, going into summer vibe is something for my under eyes. Now on those days where you know I am trying some fun skincare masks to really brighten up the under eyes and it's absolutely working with that serum I've been using, I feel like I can do less across the front half of my face and I love that. So if I'm wanting just an easy breezy weekend where maybe I'm just going to run some errands or I'm just going to go to lunch with my husband, maybe I just want a little extra coverage to even just go do a beach day or something, this product is still something I'm going to tell you I love. At first I hated it, then I fell in love with it, I raved about it last summer, and I'm going to just tell you again, this is your summer PSA, that if you're wanting that clean girl glowy summer vibe for this year, check out the Tarte Glow Wand. This product is so darn good. It's reflective in the right ways where it's not shiny, but just makes your skin look like a healthy glow in the targeted areas to deflect from maybe some dark circles, kind of give you a little bit of an even look to you. It is so good, I love this. Some of you guys were around when I was first trying it and so confused. This is the Shape Tape Glow Wand and it comes in a variety of colors and I believe it's $30 retail. So she is pricier in my mind. So I could see you asking yourself, well, is this a highlighter? Because at first I thought it was a highlighter. No, the way I use it is targeted underneath the eyes. I mean, you could use it on your cheekbones and stuff. I mean, there's no, there's no rules saying that you can't, so do it if you want to. But when things get to be like in those higher price ranges, before I just pull the trigger and buy things, I look at reviews. I go to YouTubers that I trust. And for me personally, this is what, two years running for me, maybe two and a half years running for me. This is something that I love to put under the eyes. I use my fingers, tap it in, so it has a very natural blend to it. Use it even up onto the lid. I love this. I think this gives such a nice healthy glow to your skin. Last, you can even powder it down a little bit if you want to, if you're an oily girl like me and you're like, mm, this shines a little too much maybe. Powder it down a touch and go. There are days I don't use any concealers or any foundations and I just did that over the weekend and only use this. Love it so much. This is my summer PSA. This is also more of a summer staple for me. So I'm adding it here into some of my favorites. However, I if you have have this, I could see you not needing this next piece that I'm going to tell you is from the drugstore. But if this $30 price range for you is like, eh, dang it, that's just out of budget for me this summer. I got other stuff I want to do. I get it. So another great option, if you're still wanting a little bit of brightening under here, but nothing that's going to be too heavy or cakey, I still love and use the e.l.f. Brightening Concealer. This is in a pen format here and this is really inexpensive. It has a little brush on the tip of it and it spreads beautifully. I use a little bit of it, well more than a little bit. I tend to layer it up in the areas I need it the most, so maybe like under a certain section of my eyes, but then a lighter amount on the ends. And then I use my fingers, sometimes a sponge, and I'll just blend it in. And this just gives that nice brightening and it gives a little bit of coverage for any under eyes kind of makes you look seamless but it's such a lighter way to do makeup when it's hot out that i feel like it does do some of the things 
that this does for me. Today I double did it just because I wanted to see because I know I've done that in the past and it does still look great to do both of them. But if this is too much for you, you can get this flawless brightening concealer for $6 at like Target or Ulta or wherever you go shopping for your e.l.f. products and it's so smooth that it just blends into your skin. It's a super easy brightening product that does a great job and I love it in the summer. I kind of didn't mean for some of this to be my kickoff summer favorites, but it kind of leans into that a little bit because this is that time of year that I tend to pull out maybe things that are less coverage, but still give me that beautiful skin glow that I don't have to worry about how do I look midday or by the end of the day. Now, I kind of teased you guys in a very recent video where I was going through all of my drugstore makeup that I have been buying and I've been buying a ton of drugstore makeup and not everything is going to be listed in this video because I'm still working through some of it so if you want to see some of the things I'm getting from the drugstore and trying right now check out my last video I go really in depth we do a get ready with me you get to see it be performed on the skin how I'm feeling about it all the things and some of them will be in here but some of them aren't so yeah, we got a lot to go through, but I also teased that there was this one foundation that Adam full on called me out while we were out at lunch. It's not like we were at in the privacy of our own home. We were out at lunch somewhere and he just kept looking at me, but not in that like, I adore you, love you way. It was just kind of like, I'm assessing what's going on right now, what's happening. And he just kept saying, well, are you trying a new foundation? And I was like, well, yeah, I'm trying a lot of new things. I've been in the throes of a lot of trying right now, such as having a YouTube channel, and this is what I love to do. And he was like, okay. But he goes, you're trying a new foundation. And I said, yes. And he said, it looks cakey. And I was like, whoa, savage. But thank you. These are the things I need to know. He knows I'm always looking for the feedback, especially in lighting that's outside of our home or maybe the nice natural lighting that I film in front of. And so I have been trying this foundation in multiple ways because it is a higher end foundation that I got at Ulta. But, 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 when there's something new that I really want to try, and I've maybe heard good things, but I've also heard not so good things, if there is a mini available, I will always recommend my girls save some bucks, get the mini first to decide if it's going to be something you want to invest more dollars into because maybe it's not gonna work for your skin. And I may be finding that out right now. This may not be working for me just because of the way my skin is. So if this is one of your holy grails, I'm trying. I'm trying to make it work and today I did it differently with a BB cream slash skin diffusing tint to go along with it to try to help the situation. And girl, the big version of this is $40. So I'm really glad I bought the mini. And this is something you guys are probably familiar with. This is the Tarte Face Tape Full Coverage Double Duty Foundation. And I've been trying this for weeks now. The shade I have here is light neutral. I went back and forth between a couple of different shades because I wanted to make sure it was going to work for me. And this one I think is a good color match, maybe a little light, but not something I couldn't work with. It is, you know, Tarte Shape Tape was is trying to make its comeback in marketing because that was all the rage for concealer for a super duper long time. The hype, obviously, like everything, it rides a wave, then it cools off and, you know, they're trying to rebrand. They're trying to find new ways to use that branding and marketing. And I mean, looking at this, you're like, whoo, girl, I don't see anything like that just covers everything. So in some capacities that could be good, but if maybe you have skin like mine, maybe that then turns into cakiness by midday. So that is what I'm in the throes of testing and maybe this is a fail for me at the moment, but it's only at the moment because things could change as I find new ways to do it. But alone, this did make me look cakey. I thought it could be one of the powders that I was trying that was drugstore. I think I've debunked that. I don't think it was the powder that I used. I think it might just be this particular foundation is too much on its own for my personal skin type. And it kind of stinks because at first it doesn't look like it's going to be too cakey on my hand. And yes, I have been using a damp beauty sponge with it because that tends to pull away, you know, some of the excess, maybe makes it look a little bit nicer. And that's kind of why I thought for sure when Adam said that my foundation looked cakey, I was like, no, 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 no. I did the whole nice blend today. It's got to be the powder I'm trying. It was a new powder. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it was this because I've done some other tests with it and... 
I don't think it looks too bad yet. I've only had this on now for a couple of hours. I kind of need to see how it does midday and I'll keep you posted. But today I paired it with one of my favorite skin tints. Today I paired it with my Cali Ray Free Dreaming Blurring Lightweight Skin Tint. This is a product I really like. I wear this alone on the days where I'm just wanting a little bit of coverage, but I can build it up if I need to, if I've got like a trouble area or something. I paired this with this today because it is kind of a runnier version of a skin tint. It's a lot thinner, a little bit more liquidy, because I also tried this with my Pure 4-in-1 Tinted Moisturizer that you guys know I love, but it has a lot of coverage to it. That was too much of a combination, still didn't look good. So now I'm trying this combo in hopes that maybe I can salvage this and make this work for me. I don't know, maybe as summer goes on and it gets even hotter out, would the humidity make this worse or better? I don't know. But so far, this unfortunately is a fail for my skin because it gets cakey midday. But this, even standing alone, I love this for summertime. So this is another one that I wanted to put on your radar for this summer for just a nice skin tint vibe, but it does give some coverage. Sitting here investigating my skin at the moment and I'm like, I think, I think she's doing okay. But this is a lot of makeup today, right? It, it is. So the product that I was hoping was actually gonna be the problem <laughs> instead of that foundation is a CoverGirl powder. I let you guys know that in my recent drugstore video that I was kind of hoping this clean, fresh powder, it's a little compact, was gonna be the issue, not the foundation, because you guys know I love my Advanced Radiance from CoverGirl. I have hit pan on her again and again and again. So good, rebought it a zillion times. This is newer to me, I wasn't so sure. Now I've gotten an opportunity to play with this multiple times in multiple ways. Cause usually what I like to do with one of these powders is take a brush, kind of go down the nose, under the eyes here. So you're using even less product than you would with the puff. And that's why I was a little unsure what it was. Well, I'm pretty sure I have now discovered this is pretty good. It is different from the Advanced Radiance powder that I rave about all the time. This one is, I would say, maybe not as creamy as the other one that I like from Advanced Radiance with CoverGirl, but maybe packs a bit more coverage, but that's not a bad thing. I do think it doesn't wear the same, and I'm still investigating what that is, but I don't think this is where the cakiness comes from. I used it with the puff this morning because I wanted a little bit more coverage under the eyes. I wanted to test it further and see how much more I could go with it. I'm actually liking this. I am, and I didn't think anything would ever pull me away from my Advanced Radiance Powder from CoverGirl. So we're gonna see if this becomes a new holy grail for me, but it's definitely shocking me and definitely in the best list of the month for sure. Okay, so I forgot about this next product when I was doing my drugstore full video. So this is actually drugstore prices, but I purchased it at Ulta. So I kind of forgot about it in that video. Something else I have been trying, and don't ask me why this is a product I thought I wanted to try because it's so different from anything else that I normally would like. I was on one that day when I was shopping. I was like, yeah, I want to try this. Essence, I love their brand. This is the Essence Kissed by the Light Face Illuminator. And you can see this is a little bit of everything. It's got a, you know, blush, bronzer, and a lot of highlighter. I really was just thinking this could be something simple, something great, a little all in one, but maybe if I mush it together, it'll be fantastic. I didn't know. And I'm honestly a little too chicken <laughs> to do the full swirl thing. I tend to still be very precise when I use this because there's just a lot of highlighter in here. They have another version that's mostly blush. So I had that one in my hand at first and I was like, I really don't think that's gonna work for me. I wanna try this more illuminating but bronzier version because that's something that I have loved in the past. This is only $5.99 as well, so I'm sorry I forgot to talk about this in that drugstore video, I really meant to. If I take a more tapered brush with this and kind of go into targeted areas, and I have to avoid the first day I did the area I should not have on my face. I think we all have those sections on our face where we're like, mmm, don't put highlighter there. For me, that's right in here, because when I do, that's when it looks greasy oily and not like a glowy summer goddess. I'll kind of dip into here and start about here on my face and pull back and that's how we get some of that zhuzh, that glow. And I have not been into highlighters really for a while for the face because I've been using so many products that either have some dew in them or I've been a little bit more of that natural look. So this is a very nice, smooth look to the face. I have it mostly aimed out to here, kind of like up around, but I don't hate this 
but I, I really have to be mindful with where I put it because if I go in here, those pores, girl, they take over. They do not look good. It just doesn't look good. But if you don't have my bossy pores, highlight to the heavens, girl. You know what I haven't done yet, actually? It's kind of put some of this on a brush. Now, I already do have a little bit of body makeup on that I'm going to talk about here in a little bit. But I'll bet you, you could even do something like this if you just want a little bit shoulder glow. You know, in the summertime, when they have these tops that are off the shoulder. Which, by the way, rompers are huge right now. They are everywhere I go shopping. So you're going to be seeing some cold shoulder summer. I'm just saying. So if you're wanting a little bit of rosiness, do, but also some bronzing moments to like combat these, you know, suntan lines. You could do stuff like this. I was actually shocked that this does not really grab to the texture all over my face. It was just in this targeted area. So when I put it back here, and that's my skin, that's like me personally, one of my own things. I find that this still looks really smooth back here in these areas where I just want that pop of like sunny, glowy goodness for summer. You guys, I forgot to tell you how I started this video this morning because I don't really like my lips to just be blank. I don't like them to be dry. I jumped back into the CoverGirl Yummy Gloss, and you guys, I wear this with no makeup. I wear this with all the makeup, with minimal makeup. This stuff is so darn good. This was part of their new Clean Girl line that I have been testing, and this is the Clean Fresh Yummy Lip Gloss for $7.99 at the drugstore. I got mine at Target. The color I have here is Glamingo Pink. This is what I had on when I was doing my makeup this morning because I don't like my lips to just be dry. I like to have, let them have a little hydration while I'm doing all the things. This is really, really good. I believe I heard about this from Andrea Mitiliano and she was so right. This is so great. I honestly almost didn't review this though. Almost didn't even wanna buy it to try it because I have something else from their Clean Fresh line that is a lip product that just, it's not cutting it for me. And I don't know if I'm gonna keep it in my collection much longer. As you guys know, I'm doing a full declutter series, so I may need to do a second wave once I'm done with this. I don't know yet. This is the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Tinted Lip Balm. And you know, in the component, she looks okay. Mine is the shade More for Peach. And when you put it on, it's really not bad. It does give you just enough tint. It doesn't give you a ton. I do feel like I need to layer it just a bit if I want a little bit more, but my lips are also pretty pigmented. So if you don't have much pigment to your lips, you could be like, girl, I don't need nearly as much as you're saying. But what happens for me is this gets pretty messy. It kind of gets all over the lips, even when you're doing just a little bit, I find. And it tends to just kind of grow on my face somehow. And then it really disturbs the rest of the stuff that's on my face. I have tried this just on natural days, neutral days. This isn't really my favorite lip tint formula, unfortunately. I'm gonna try it a couple more times because I really wanted to investigate more of this clean, fresh line. That's kind of the way makeup is this summer. And I wanted to investigate what was worth your dollars. I personally would say put your money towards the yummy lip gloss over the tinted lip balm personally, but that's just me. This also feels a lot more sticky tacky, the lip balm versus the gloss, which isn't tacky. It doesn't like grab to itself. It's really comfortable and just glides on really nicely. And I don't feel like it moves around on my face. I really don't. I use it when I'm putting on makeup. Whereas I would not want to do that again with this tinted lip balm because I feel like this tinted lip balm goes everywhere when I'm putting on makeup. Whereas this is a gloss and it totally stayed put. It was like the opposite of what you would think personally. And then just for wearing it day to day throughout the day, once you have makeup on or not, um, this is still my winner, the yummy gloss. I still prefer this. I've also really been trying a lot of different eyeshadow palettes this month. And I have been trying some that I got from BoxyCharms, which I'm super excited to say one of them is like a new favorite for me. And I have been trying some at the drugstore, including a brand I had never, ever tried. I never ever tried Sigma eyeshadows, never. I actually filmed a full like first impressions with this that I'm gonna be using on my YouTube shorts. So be sure to check that out. But I'd heard so many good things on YouTube. But I just did not know what to expect with this palette. And I've actually found I really liked it. I like the color story. I found this at Target and they are a little bit pricier, I will say for a drugstore palette. I got mine at Target and it says that it's $30. I'm trying to remember if I spent $30 on this, I might have. I I was really curious because I've never tried anything from Sigma. I heard great things about their brushes, 
but I wanted to know about their eyeshadows and I really am impressed with them. I feel like they blend really well. I feel like they give you some good pigment, but you can also build them up. It's not like overwhelmingly like pow the second you put it on your brush, which can actually be a good thing because you don't want too much when you're deeping into some of these deeper tones and stuff like that. I wanted to try some of these. I'm really glad that I did because I have been reaching for this ever since I purchased it. Even if I'm using other palettes, I tend to do that where I will have a couple different palettes in front of me because I want different shades from different palettes. I do that all the time, but I've been told that's weird. Do you do that? I'm really liking this and I'm excited to try more from the Sigma line because of this palette. Really, really good, but she is pricier. So I think that's why I've been hesitant because I was like, okay, well, I've heard other people talk about it. Is it worth that much money at the drugstore? Because to me, that's almost Ulta prices. And I would say this is worth that. If you're looking for some quality shadows, if you're kind of frustrated with maybe like the CoverGirl shadows haven't always been known to be great. If you just like are just seeing those palettes at the drugstore, you may be like discouraged. I've even gotten some ColourPop palettes from Target that I'm like, man, these are just not cutting it. They're not as good as the other ColourPop palettes. So if you're looking for a little bit of a splurge at the drugstore, I do recommend the Sigma palettes. Also, if you can find this, I could not find this palette, save my soul, at Walgreens, CVS, Target. I couldn't find it anywhere. And I happened to find one standalone at a random Walgreens that I'd never been to before when I was getting, I think, meds for Adam or something. It was, it was this always naked Wet n Wild palette. I kept seeing it online and I really wanted to try it. I'm getting back into some Wet n Wild products now that they are 100% cruelty free and I did talk about this in my drugstore video so I won't harp on it too much but those smaller palettes with them like the maybe four pans I was just kind of like oh they're okay if they're like two three bucks you know you're a girl on a budget and you just need something but this I believe this is ten dollars like $9.99 but this is so good very pigmented I have tried a bunch of these different shadows I still want to dive into some more of these but I've been playing with a lot of palettes lately. Now I have been able to find over and over like the always blush version of this, but I really wanted the always naked because you guys know I'm constantly in a nude mood and really have enjoyed this. The pigment is crazy. You get a lot of buildup with this. I feel like you get a lot of color payoff for 10 bucks. So if you can find this in your store and this color story speaks to you, if you're wanting a nude palette for summer, you don't want to break the bank at, you know, Ulta, Sephora, things like that, but you want something quality. I have been loving this and have been using it pretty regularly since I got it. Oh my goodness. You probably need a glitter glue with this because it is a big chunky glitter moment, but I'm not mad. There's also only one of them in there, so it's not like it's like half the palette or a decent amount of the palette. It's only one, so if you're not a glitter fan or you're not in that zone, but I could see for a going out night, just popping a little in there. I feel like the shimmers and the mattes are both really good in this palette too, and sometimes you don't get that best of both worlds palette from a drugstore palette, not always. It can obviously, yes, be achieved, but it's not a, an everyday like given that the mattes and the shimmers are gonna be good. So I always appreciate when things can be a best of both worlds vibe. I will say the glitter just wiped right off with one big swipe. So yes, definitely get a glitter glue. I have been going back and forth with how I feel about a palette that I got from BoxyCharm. And I try to let you guys know, at least in a recent update of a Faves and Fails, how I'm feeling about some of their products. This iconic London palette, the Beachside Shade Eyeshadow Palette here, has a lot of beautiful colors in it. This palette, in comparison to the other palette I'm going to be talking about, requires a decent amount of buildup. That's not a bad thing. Some people actually prefer that type of palette. I'm okay with a palette like that, but there are occasions where I'm like, yeah, I just want to take this creamy matte shade, have it be down, and I don't want to have to work hard for it because I still got the rest of the eye look to go. So I will say in some capacities, this isn't maybe my favorite eyeshadow palette, but I will say I think it is consistent. I think the mattes are all very consistent and work the same each time, where this darker shade bikini I actually have on my lower outer lid here to be a little bit of a liner. I have warm sand in my crease, just a little bit of coconut today. The matte shades I think all require a little bit of layering to maybe achieve the full opacity you're going for, but again, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I also played with some of the shimmers today because I feel like I haven't gotten an opportunity to play with those too much. Um, I have Sundown 
and Blue Lagoon here, and I've used both of these, and I would say they're pretty consistent as well. I wanna get into some of these yellows. I felt like the vibe I was going with today didn't exactly scream yellow, but I want to in the near future to see what kind of looks I can achieve with this palette. I think this is a nice palette. I think the shimmers might perform a bit better than the mattes, just because the mattes do require a lot of buildup, whereas the shimmers are all pretty consistently very pigmented, very creamy. I like them quite a bit. So I tried like four, maybe five palettes this month. This one was probably my least favorite out of the whole bunch of May, to be honest, but it doesn't mean it's a bad palette. It just didn't stand out to me in the positive ways some of these other ones did. But it also had really tough competition, to be fair. I was getting back into Wet n Wild that I was excited about and super affordable. And also, oh my gosh, when you get an Anastasia Beverly Hills palette in the Icon box, the replacement for the Boxy Luxe, Girl, I fell in love with this. This is such a good quality palette. Even the outside feels super luxe and bougie. This is the Primrose palette and it's got, it's actually considered a face and eyes palette because over here we've got some blushes and bronzers and over here are some eyeshadows. She came broken, so I had to do a little bit of repair, but these are such creamy, soft shadows and the shimmers that I was able to press so much product back in. I definitely have enough here to play with, even though it was bare when I first got it. These are very like stand up to the Anastasia Beverly Hills original hype of the quality of her shadows. This orange tone here kind of throws me. I think it's for maybe people with some darker skin tone, but I used this today on my eyes along with some of the other shadows in here. Fell in love. Used a little bit of the blush on the face today as well. Love it. I think it all looks smooth. It all looks nice. This is the palette though that I know I can pop back into when I'm trying stuff that maybe is taking too long to build up for me. When I'm trying a lot of different shadows too, because again, I like to lay out multiples in play sometimes when I'm kind of going back and forth. And I found this to be the saving grace for the crease as well. I do think this palette is really good. So if you're looking for a new Anastasia palette, this one runs about $55 at Ulta and it's got a little bit of everything, obviously. Face products, eye products, this is really good. Super duper happy to get this in the newest subscription with the icon box from the BoxyCharm Ipsy line. This was the standout for me for sure. Now I do want to say the iconic London palette, the retail value on this is 40. And while I think it's good, it definitely doesn't live up or pass the hype of the Anastasia Beverly Hills. So they're both pretty high ticket items. If you need to do one or the other, my personal preference is the Primrose but you will be missing out on some of these nice colors over here, but you may already have them in other palettes. That's just my honest opinion of these two palettes. If you're kind of putting them head to head against each other at this moment, they both have their space for me, but this one, the quality on it is so good. The Primrose, it's worth the extra 15 bucks at 55 bucks. Now the brows. I was trying something new for the brows and that's kind of scary for me because I don't like doing brows. It's just that next step. I just kind of want them to be done so I can move on to the fun parts of makeup. But the brow is so important on the face, isn't it? It can make or break a look sometimes. I'm trying new from the drugstore. Again, I had never tried this line, Joa. I tried two different things from the Joa line during this past month to try a new line, kind of similar to like I did with Sigma. I wanted to branch out with my drugstore attempts, tries, wear tests, see what I was gonna love and not gonna love. This Joa Brow Down To Me Precision Brow Pencil for $9.49 is really nice. What really shocked me about this is that it's a pencil that kind of goes down and dries or lays or becomes a powder of sorts because with this spoolie on the back that's super comfortable, you can kind of draw it out on your brow, kind of fill it in, and then you use the spoolie and it definitely just feathers itself out. It looks really nice. It looks well put together. On camera, off camera, I feel like I could just do this alone. The shade I have here is black brown to kind of go with my hair. And I like that it went that deep because a lot of brow pencils have a little bit more of a red base to them that doesn't really go with my complexion or hair. So I appreciated the black brown color. I thought the finish of this turns out really nice once you use the spoolie and kind of like get it down, work it through the brow. By itself, without the spoolie, I notice it looks a little chunkier. So I think you absolutely need to do the spoolie motion with it, kind of work with it through the brow. But I do really like this. This is one of the new products for me that even though it's like almost 10 bucks and 10 bucks at the drugstore, gosh, I'm getting to that age, I guess, where I'm like, wow, I used to remember when it was like six bucks, five bucks. So it's almost $10 for this line from Joa, but I like it. I think it's a really good product. 
So when I also tried that, I have a fail that I did not try on today for you, but I did try on for you in my drugstore video. It's a fail for me from this line, but it's because it felt like a little misrepresentative. This is the Joa TMI Velvet Lip Color, and the lip color I have here is Messy Hair. So when I thought I was getting messy hair, I thought it was gonna be close to the color of the component. There were no swatches in my CVS because this is $8.99. I went back and forth going, I've liked velvet lip products before, but will I like this one? Well, let me get a color that I think will work for me and then I can go from there. Well, this is the color of the component. There are no swatches there. It's almost $10. So then when I got it out of the tube, I was like, okay, let's, let's try it. You saw me try this on in my other video. It definitely comes out, it's such a creamy formula. I wish this was a color I would like more, but it really goes more into a red base versus maybe this more mauve color. It starts to oxidize even more as you're even looking at it. It starts to get a little bit redder and a little bit redder. And this formula, I feel like it comes out a little splotchy, so you need to do a little bit more smoothing, which just adds to the depth of the color as well. So you can definitely see the difference, I think. This is the color I wanted. This is the color that came out, which it still looked pretty on camera, but I don't really go for a red lip. And if I was buying this for this color, I'm disappointed. I also found it to be less comfortable than some of the velvet lippies that I have tried in the past. So it was kind of having two strikes for me right up front. It wasn't comfortable. It wasn't the color it claimed it was going to be. And then I wiped it off to try on something else that I'm gonna tell you about. And you guys, I like the stain look of this so much more. And it might be because my lips are already kind of pigmented when they're bare. So adding red on top of that just made it extra red for me, whereas it wasn't this more mauve tone. But when I wipe it off, take it off, your lips are stained. So be aware of that too, that this will stain your lips. But I liked the color of the stain, so I was less mad at this. But it was a fail for me for those other reasons. It's just something that I'm going to be like, ooh, do I want to use this today? Do I want more of a red base? When I really don't gravitate to that much at all, unless it's maybe the holidays. And that's like super rare that I'll even pull it out then, unfortunately. I also just kind of went down a rabbit hole of looking for a nice white creamy makeup product to go under the eyes because I was trying so hard to achieve a specific eye look. I'll say I think ColourPop might be where it's at when it comes to liners and creamy lid products. I have here their liner and their color sticks, both in like a white shade. I had already had the liner and knew it was going to be great. It does a really good job. You don't have to do too much mussing and fussing. It lasts. They're liners are known to be great. I got their color stick or shadow stick in the shade cold girl. And that's what I have on today in my inner corner and just kind of used a brush to kind of like buff it around in the corner. I think these stay, they have nice lasting power. They give a little bit of shine, which is what I was wanting to achieve for a specific look I was going for. Also got a super shock shadow because I love their super shock shadows and the shade tassel is beautiful. It's got a nice frosting for your lids if you're going for something a little bit more zhuzhy, either in the inner corner or on the lid itself. But this wet and wild pencil that was white and creamy in the shade to my yang, this crumbly crumbly liner didn't do the job for me. I do like NYX liners as well if you're looking for a white creamy liner at the drugstore. I believe that one's in the shade Milk. Um, that one was a holy grail for me for a long time, but I wanted to go out of my comfort zone. You know, I'm trying new stuff. So I tried the liner over here from Wet n Wild and enhanced swatches. I was like, oh yeah, I can make this work. Once I get it in my waterline or under my eye or even in the corner, it gets really crumbly. It really breaks apart. It doesn't do a very good job where I need it to perform. Swatching can be okay, but I need it to perform on the lid, in the eye, around the eye, something. And this just really didn't cut it for me. It was crumbly, wore off really quickly compared to the ColourPop and the NYX one from what I remember. So I would save your money and skip on this product and maybe invest in ColourPop because I have loved all of these options instead of the Wet n Wild. Also, just to throw my ColourPop some love, they do still sell some of these ultra matte lippies. Today I have on the shade Times Square. I told you guys I love this in that drugstore video. ColourPop I feel like is still considered like drugstore. It's affordable. Now you can get it at Target, you can get it at Ulta really inexpensive. I actually have that on today as the base lip. And then I went in with, gosh darn it, I bought three more of these because I love them. Heart Maracuja Juicy Lips. I believe these are the plumping lippies. I love them so much. I have three. There's another one in my handbag. The lip plumpers. I have this on today. I always have one in my handbag. 
I love this formula and they're coming out with a new version as well for the summer. I need to investigate that because I, I use these a ton. I loved them last summer. I love them this summer. And a mascara that I don't know if I've gotten to tell you guys I really love is something that I can't tell if this is a drugstore brand or not. I feel like some of their stuff's in the drugstore but not maybe all of it. It's the Uma Beauty Salute the Sun Drama Bomb Mascara. This is something I have really, really liked. I find that I can build this up. I'll let it dry, build up a little bit more, and then what I like to do is take my eyelash curler and really curl the lashes, and then it stays up. They stay at attention, and that is so darn hard for my lashes to do that this mascara has definitely made a difference for me personally, and I love that. I believe it's 1950 is what I'm finding online. Some of these brands that I do get from subscription boxes, I have a hard time finding them to link for you guys because I'll find them on like Poshmark or random stores. I'm guessing this isn't a US brand because I'm mostly finding this on a website called Luxie Shop. But if you see this and maybe a pop-up or a drop, drop shop or whatever they're calling them now with the FC merge, this is a really good mascara that I'm liking. Starting to look a little shiny here. Now I am starting to wonder, do I look cakey? I just don't think this foundation is going to cut it for me with the Shape Tape. I think I'm already looking cakey and I don't even feel like I've had this on midday, but it looks like right up in here. Mm. I just don't know if this foundation is gonna cut it for me, guys. I may have to declutter this. And I did do some research after filming my recent BoxyCharm video with some of the Anastasia products. This caramel, cream bronzer that we received it looks like they actually only had a few shades so a lot of people either got caramel or another shade that just didn't really work for my face so today i tried it like on collarbones just to see if i wanted to do some like body makeup for the summer like i mentioned i do have a glowy eloise product on that i got years ago from a boxy charm that i think looks great on my skin i love it so i always use that in the summer to juice up the shoulders the legs all that good stuff but I tried this here, like on the collarbones, and I'm not sold, to be honest. I think this is still just a little too orange-based for me. When I tried to really get some nice depth and dimension and glow to my shoulders, I just, I kept seeing the orangeness of it, and that's why I was like, I don't know if this is gonna work. I may try it on the face one more time, but I'm trying to pivot with this, but I just don't think the colors maybe they got from Anastasia work, so I guess that, it just kind of stinks because I'll bet this is a pretty good product if you like a cream product, which is kind of hit or miss for me as we know. This video has already gotten so long, you guys. I feel like I had some lifestyle stuff that's new to my beauty space and just stuff I'm loving, but I don't know if you want that in these videos or not. So maybe give me a thumbs up or just like let me know in the comments below what you're thinking because do you guys want just a summer favorites type of video where maybe I talk about some inexpensive sunglasses? I have a brand new light up mirror here in my beauty space that has been such a game changer. I don't know if I have time in this video for that, but do you want like just a lifestyle favorites, maybe not faves and fails, but just favorites like lifestyle stuff that I'm getting from like Amazon, Target, things like that. Tell me in the comments below if that's a video you'd be interested in because I've started a list of those. Thank you guys so much for watching and going through this really in-depth favorites and fails with me from everything I've been trying this past month, letting you know my thoughts. Tell me what you guys are loving. Are there things I should be trying for this summer? Things that are your holy grails that you're like, girl, I use this every summer. Go get it so you can tell our friends about it. Let me know because I'm open to trying a bunch of new things this year. Thank you so much for watching and if you happen to be new to my channel. Hi new friends! I really hope you take a quick moment to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on the upcoming videos because we have a whole new month ahead of us and BoxyCharm is I think delivering at the end of this week so I have a lot to talk to you guys about. Bye friends!